Hey, guess what? What? It is I, Ripper X. Hey, what's up, guys? Ripper X here. Hey, we're doing something different today. Uh, we're doing a bit of a guide video. My good buddy Brent is going to be helping us out. He's a really good skirmisher. Uh, long story short, I've had a lot of emails, a lot of PMs, a lot of people message me in game and on YouTube and on various forms of media like Twitter and Facebook that they're looking for, a lot of new players especially, looking for some kind of tips and basic help as a new skirmisher. I have a lot of guys that are uh, PMing me saying, hey, I'm a new skirmisher. Do you have any tips? What do you recommend? Brent has some good stuff to share. We're, we kind of went through some stuff, some of the basic stuff. Hopefully for any new skirmisher out there, this video will help help you guys out. Let's check it out. Once you decide that you want to actually be a skirmisher, um, you're going to want to go with your boosters. So you're going to get the agile boosters. You want to get like the first three of those. That'll give you plus 30 dex, which will put you at 50. And um, from there, you pretty much want to keep pumping points into your base stat for um, a dexterity as a skirmisher, because that gives you pretty much everything you need. It gives you the, the bow damage, it gives you the attack speed, and it gives you stamina, which uh, you know you obviously use for pretty much every skirmisher spell. First few points you definitely want to put into that. I'm not sure exactly how much. You want to get to at least about 70 dexterity. That'll let you use the studded armor, which is, is pretty solid PvP armor. That's the rank 30 stuff. The other option there is either go 70 dex or you get your evade skill. Evade is incredibly important for a skirmisher. Um, it's 1500 prowess and basically what it does is it lets you you know get distance on an enemy. Yeah. So the way evade works is whatever direction you're running that's the way that you're going to leap to. So you can go backwards, forwards, side to side, etc. And the other great thing about evade is that you can cast spells or charge up spells um, while you're mid evade. Um, you know, you can you can do pretty much anything mid evade. You could eat food, you could eat a pot. Now once the scrum gets maybe like eight to ten thousand prowess, they're getting up there. They're starting to do maybe rank ten, rank twenty stuff, pushing into decks. I mean, you want to put you want to push your deck stat as much as possible, obviously. And eventually, you want to get, you get your fourth deck booster as soon as possible as well. I mean, for the most part, if you if you you know put points into explosive arrow or you put points into salvo. I mean, actually, salvo is pretty important to get at, at some point. Um, although it's three thousand prowess a lot. Yeah, a lot of it is, is just what your general focus is and whether you are in a clan or solo. If, if you're if you're going to be in a clan, you're going to be able to group with other people that are going to be able to kind of support you so that you don't necessarily have to PvP alone. Um, I would hold off on Salvo and also hold off on, on putting points into any of the other skills as well. In PvE, you're, you're pretty much just going to be using your regular bow attack with the occasional exploit weakness and um, efficiency, as well as, you know, stuff like evade. But um, Salvo, really, you're, you're just you're not going to want to use it in PvE because it just takes too much too much stats. So if your focus is on just leveling your character as quickly as possible, you're definitely going to want to just stay away from Salvo for a while and, and pump either into Dexterity or maybe into something like um, Wisdom. Um, wisdom affects your mana pool as well as your transfer skills. And that, that's another thing too, is your, your transfers are incredibly important. You're going to want to get those up to at least 50 skill um, pretty, pretty quickly. I'd say around when you hit 70 dex is when you want to start putting stuff into those. Up until the point where you hit around 50 of a base stat, it's it's really pretty cheap. Um, I don't have the exact numbers right now, but getting a stat from 20 to, to 50, it's 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 fairly cheap and it's going to help you a lot for the, those 30 points. I definitely say that, you know, especially if you're looking at something like kind of, you know, solo play or maybe your clan mates are higher prowess, so you're going to be soloing more. You're probably going to want to get at least about 50 wisdom um, fairly quickly. That just, you know, mana, you're also using mana for things like your mana to stamina. So basically your mana is like another stamina pool. And also just for all your general skills, um, they, they all use a little bit of mana, I believe. So at what point is it worth um, for, for a new skirmisher to start putting points into the archery uh, skill? Obviously archery mastery down the road. I know archery mastery, once you max it up, I think it gives you three points of damage per tick. Um, is that, I mean, that's important. I know it's not super, I, I think you get more damage out of, out of dexterity, uh, out of the dex stat anyways. But I mean, actually pumping points into archery, what do you reckon? Because you're right, it is pretty cheap. To max archery, was like 1,600 pounds or something like that total? To max it from 1 to 100? Yeah. Um, especially just getting it to 50, that's that's really cheap. I, I think it's something, um, and it's, it's not going to give you a ton, but you're, you are going to see a lot of benefit for 
the amount of points you're putting in. And that's that's pretty much the way it is for almost every skill, is um, getting it up to about 50 skill level, it, it doesn't cost a lot. Um, I just looked at it real quick and it looks like it's about 231 prowess to get up to 50 for a weapon skill. So you know, you could do that as you're as you're getting up to 70 decks, or you could get up to 70 decks and do it then. What, what I recommend to people is, is you try to hit 70 decks so that you can wear the studded and then you start doing stuff like your transfers, your heal self, um, a lot of the spells that you use a lot like exploding arrow, um, exploit weakness, that kind of thing. You get all those to about 50. Um, it's fairly cheap and you're gonna see a lot of benefit for the amount of prowess points that you spend. I, I always recommend to people that ask me um, that you get up to 110 decks before you really start getting above 50 in, um, in any of the skills including the weapon skills. Um, you just you see so much benefit from those base stats as opposed to those other things that it's it's really worth it. Um, the one exception would be when you're talking about stuff like the evade skill and salvo for dead eye, or um, when you're talking about heightened reflexes for the uh, the brawler. The thing with Darkfall too is once you get to that kind of middle-ish level where you're about 15k prowess you know you have like 70 to 100 decks or 70 to 100 whatever your base stat is you're gonna be pretty viable it's it's a it's a very skill-based game where hitting the opponent is so much more important than your you know having two or three extra damage in your attack basically the difference between Deadeye and Brawler is you're looking at the melee skirm and more survivability in the brawler versus total range and more group stuff with the dead eye. So the dead eye, you have your the ultimate skill is called Salvo, and it's a large area of effect that slows the opponent to a walk and also does a significant amount of damage. So basically, that obviously has a lot of value in group PvP as well as solo PvP because you can actually use it to slow down groups you can use it if even if just in duels you you know you cast that on a guy and you can get multiple hits and you can get an exploit weakness on him, you can get an exploding arrow he's he's just slow he's easy to hit so really i, I think most skirms go with dead eye unless you're looking to do either a lot of scouting or just kind of solo survivability um I personally have both at, at the higher level so that I can either, you know, go in as a scout and have incredible survivability where I can kind of bait the enemy or just get in and see their numbers, that type of thing. Um, but that's just looking at it from a ranged perspective. If you want it, you could actually go melee skirm and put your points into strength, get strength boosters, and just run around with a two-hander and uh, mess people up in melee. Basically for the stats, um, the way stats in Darkfall work is the, your base stats, you have strength, dexterity, intelligence, and wisdom. The way it works is one-handed is goes based on whatever is higher, your strength or your dexterity. So basically, that doesn't matter a whole lot um, as far as your, your mounted combat because you know, you're going to be maxing either dex or strength. But strength only affects two-handed, um, or two-handed damage is only affected by strength. So if you're going to become a brawler, what you're going to want to do is spend most of your points in strength and uh, and really focus on, on, on the melee aspect there. The other way you could go with brawler is you could just go extreme kiting. Um, the, the ultimate skill for, for Brawler is called Heightened Reflexes, and it gives you increased attack speed as well as increased sprint speed. And you can actually catch up to and pass a mount with that, um, with that, that skill. And so obviously that just gives you a lot of survivability as well as chasing ability. So you could definitely have a viable Brawler skirm that's range based, but I believe that it was mostly designed for a melee type of thing. One thing that drives me crazy is they don't really mention that with the way like that intelligence and wisdom works is you only get mana from whichever one is higher. So basically putting points into intelligence as a skirm, it's completely useless. You, you don't want to do that because putting points into wisdom will give you both um, increased transfers as well as that mana pool. That's good to know for a new for a new skirmisher. You don't need to put points in intelligence and wisdom. Just put points into wisdom. You want to get wisdom up. That's gonna help your transfers. Obviously, if you want to go mage at some point, I think intelligence is good to have. But yeah, that's a good point. It's kind of a waste of. Uh... Yeah, definitely. And you know, you can you, obviously in Darkfall you can switch between the classes, and um, pretty much any class 
it, it's going to be okay um, in the early PvP and uh, PvE, but once you get to the later stages, you really want to focus on one class mostly, just so that you have, you know, a more uh, a stronger character in in that PvP battle, and especially in the the higher end PvE stuff. You you know, you, you need those points in your base stats just to do enough damage to be viable. Just some basic stuff for like basic aiming. Um, as a skirm, even more than other classes, you're going to want to do more PVE as opposed to just harvesting and crafting for prowess because this is going to let you get practice aiming. The way arrows work is that they they're affected by gravity, so they fall. So the farther away a target is, you know, the higher you're going to want to aim above them. So really, you just you need that practice in PVE in order to just learn how the basic stuff work. The crosshair, you'll notice that when you're moving. The, the middle of the crosshair gets bigger or smaller, that's your accuracy. Um, when you're running forward, it's the largest that it is, but if you hold down the skill, you'll notice that it gets smaller, and um, you know, until eventually it's just a tiny dot. Um, one thing that's really important with skirms to know is that when you're strafing left and right and backwards, your your crosshair, the accuracy is going to be really pretty good. Um, so a lot of times, what you'll do is, you know, if you're running towards someone, you stop and you stray for a second, and then you have pretty good accuracy to where you can hit if they're, you know, within a reasonable distance. Another thing I always recommend is that you lower your mouse sensitivity so that you just have more general control over your aim and your reticle. Um, that, that definitely will help a lot. You might have to get a bigger mouse pad, but that, that's something that a lot of the competitive FPS gamers do, is they have a low mouse sensitivity, so that if they do want to move their mouse quickly or move their cursor quickly, you just you move your hand quicker. Um, this lets you have more precise aiming, and um, just in general helps a lot with making those important shots. Another thing with aiming is instead of trying to constantly keep your cursor on them, especially in a game like this where the the arrow will fall and the, it's affected by you know like travel distance it's not just a straight straight railgun shot you're going to want to aim where they're going to be instead of where they currently are it's like football in a way you have yeah, to yeah like they don't pass uh, so in darkfall uh, there's, there's you have common skills and these skills can be used with any weapon doesn't matter if you have your staff out if you have a one-hander and your shield out or if you have a two-hander anything including the bow you can use your common skills um, these include stuff like your heal self spell, um, your transfers, mana to stamina, stamina to health, and uh, health to mana. So basically you want to use these to manage your stat pools and also just to generally heal yourself in, in combat. Say that you get ambushed by someone. What you're going to want to do instead of just going straight to your heal self, which it takes a while to cast, you know, that, that's a long time to cast and you're kind of slow when you're doing it. You're going to want to immediately hit your stamina to health, and that gives you a really quick boost of, of health and at, at a very small expense of stamina. The other thing to keep in mind is that most skirm skills, they use a lot more stamina than mana. So in the battle, you're going to be wanting to use your transfers a lot to keep your, your stats where they should be. Um, but also another thing to keep in mind is that you never want to run out of mana. Um, mana is used for everything really and um it, it can be really bad if you run out of mana and your buddy's getting ganked and you need to use this exploding arrow to, to get the guy off of him but you just don't have the mana for it so it, it's important to keep your stamina pool up but it's also important to manage all of your, your your stat pools one of the great things about combat in darkfall is that managing your stat pools is so important um you know for people that play starcraft 2 i i kind of think of transfers as your macro or keeping up with you know just building your units and that kind of thing it's just something that you're you're going to want to be doing um almost all the time really it, you don't want to overdo it because again you especially at the lower levels your transfers will be kind of inefficient you won't actually gain stats from using the transfers you'll actually be losing stats so you only want to use it if you really need that mana or if you only if you really need that stamina darkfall one you could you could only do first person for archery but here in in darkfall uh in holy wars you have the ability to do third person which i think gives a great advantage especially when you're fighting against melee types um, you can just generally see the battleground a lot more and, and make you know decisions based on on that that ability you kind of see behind you and, and, and see around you better 
Brett, I want to thank you so much for your help and your tips, man. Really appreciate it. I'm sure a lot of these new skirmishers, new players to the game are also going to appreciate it. So thanks for your time, my friend. I didn't uh, give you a proper thank you live in the game, so I'm doing this in post. I love you. I love you, Brett. Now, Brent and I did talk about doing more advanced skirmisher videos. There's a lot more advanced tactics that we can uh, definitely showcase in the future. If you guys like that, please let us know in the comments. Awesome beans. Okay, guys, have a good day. Peace. Don't die. All right.